Yo, what's up, everybody? This is coming live from the Slightly Buzz Podcast Studio. Not about you, dude, but one super stoked for this episode. Yeah, there's a lot of good energy going on in this. Number room right sixteen. Now. Number sixteen. But second off, I think I'm most stoked about the fact that I'm wearing this slightly buzzed hat right now. That's right, y'all. Oh. That's what's up. Yeah. Slightly buzzed hats. Yo, shout out to all the support from the people who just dude. popped off and were like, "Yo, I want one of those." Because you yep. know what, we sent out a few today. We got a ton of orders in on them. They came. They, they flew up the shelves like hotcakes, baby. Dude, like okay. hotcakes. So we ordered. We ordered <laughs> like a. Uh, we ordered a reasonable amount, I would say, for what we thought was going to do. Yeah. And honestly, I thought it would take about a week to sell them all. Mhm. That was my number, dude. I was like, if we get them out within like seven days, totally cool. Yeah, a hundred percent. And within the first two and a half hours of announcing them, of announcing that they were actually here. And actually ready for sale, they were gone, gone, yep. gone. So very cool. to That's those very cool. who purchase one, we appreciate the support a lot. Yep. A lot. We're not like out here making money off this stuff. We're just putting it back into the show, having a good time, making mm-hmm. sure to bring the best type of content for y'all at home. Hundred percent. So, and if y'all are curious as to why Tim might have one that looks a little bit different from everybody else, because he's one. difficult and needed to be like, <laughs> no, I need a different one. So okay, if you guys no. like that style hat, let exactly. us know. We were really on the fence on the white mesh but i think it looks really good yeah so, so let us know so here's what actually happened i was just like we were looking through them all and we were i was like yeah i feel like the dark blue and the tan patch would look together sick and with like the nice fresh white it's his church hat yeah <laughs> that's definitely never gonna see the light of day in church but church long story short the uh <laughs> The response to it's been great, so we'll probably have these in the next drop. We'll keep you guys posted about when we're going to restock on the hats, new yep. colorways, new products. We're going to ask you guys to let us know whether you want shirts, koozies, bottle openers. You let us know what you want in the comments. We'll figure out how to get that to the people. Uh, we're pretty stoked for that, though. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. it's going to be elite. We can't wait for you guys' feedback. We want to know what you guys want to see. So appreciate the support. Kyle, let's, what are we drinking today, yeah, bro? Dude, let's get this oh, thing man. going, baby. All right, so we're picking up another beer from New Holland Brewing Company. God, they, they stay out here. Our good friends at New Holland. Yeah, they stay they, out here. They do, and they do some good stuff. They do. So Oop. they are Yaga. They are from Holland, Michigan. We established that after some careful thought and insights. And we're going to be drinking. It just says Poets Brunch Stout on the front. But I think I remember reading something else about it. But we're going to be drinking Poets Brunch Stout. It's been a minute since we've done a stout, and this was recommended to us by an individual who definitely knows their stuff, somebody who's very involved in the beer and liquor community. True. I'm excited to try this one. It's gotten some pretty good, just like upfront commentary. Sure. I think that there is a lot of potential behind this beer, and it's honestly, I'd never heard of it before. Really? Same. So, uh, for someone who drinks as much beer as, or for some people who drink as much beer as we do, never even heard about this before. Uh... Brunch is an elite meal. Let's just throw that out there. Brunch but wait, is but elite. what is it though? Because it just takes some two different meals. Bro, it's just bougie. Yeah, but the thing it's about, a bougie meal. The thing about brunch is it's acceptable to get hammered at like ten thirty a.m. on a Sunday. Now here's what the thing about that's brunch what makes is. it. Yeah, but it's it's like soccer volleyball. Brunch is for the people who wake up on Sundays and they're still so hungover that they can't make it to breakfast, but Bloody. they want to eat before lunch. So they were like. Nah, we're just going to make it seem classy, and we're going to decide that it's called brunch. That's classy. And we're going to dress up and go but, there. But hold up here. Like, Sunday brunch can be a nice activity. Like, let's say you go to church wearing activity. your slightly buzz hat. You get out of church at, like, 1030. You haven't eaten because you didn't want to wake up that early in the first place. You get out. You, you go and have a nice brunch. You get some. You have a little you bit of breakfast foods and a little bit of lunch foods. I'm just saying it's out there. You know what You know what is a really common... common um, I guess dish at brunch, Tim. Fruit salad. No, not again. 
I, I was, I, you know, it's funny. I was about to agree with him because when I think of brunch, fruit salads in the, whatever that is, in the. So same like egg frittata. Egg so, frittata. Frit- I feel like every time I go to brunch, frittata is on the. Every on time the I go to brunch, you know I'm messing up some French toast. I spilled a little bit on my thumb, oui, oui. so I had to taste it. Because like he's always drinking off. before. See, so like, whoops, put my thumb in it. Straight up. All right, I'm gonna read a little bit off the can right here. The can's beautiful, ah, by the way. Ah, brunch. Where two worlds collide. Early enough for breakfast, yet late enough for a brew. Inspired by our classic oatmeal stout, this beer is drizzled with real maple syrup and topped with vanilla and cinnamon. Damn. Dude, you can smell the cinnamon. It is time to get some friends together and meet up for a brewer's brunch. I'd say the one note that you smell right out of the gate is definitely that cinnamon. It smells, like, very sweet. It smells... The cinnamon oh, God, and the syrup. Yes. Yeah, I was the, just the, say the, maple, syrup. the maple is very prevalent here. Syrup. Almost yeah. like when you just pop that maple bacon right on the pan and you just start to smell it a little bit as it starts to heat up. Oh, God, it's great. Mm. And, you know, actually, one thing we I was... Should, we should brunch Sunday. Sorry we to cut brunch. you off, but we should brunch Sunday. We could ball out on a brunch. Dude, I've got a... We can make some beer moses. I got a thick slab of hickory maple bacon. Nice. Yeah. We could do, like, some beer moses. All about it. Yeah, PBR yeah, and orange juice. Don't knock it till you try it. Actually, delish. Mm, all right. Okay. One thing I was. Color. Look at this dark color. I know, dude. It pours like so cold dark. brew coffee. I was about to say, after doing the the twirl and smell, I am getting a little bit of a coffee hit as well. There's I mean, some chocolate in there too. At brunch. Yeah. There's definitely some like cocoa, dark chocolate, maybe. Oh, dude, we may. I just thought of this. We should definitely jump into like power ranking. Maybe uh, we do a full brunch episode. I don't know about a full brunch up. You know what? Dude, That'd be kind maybe. of fun. We'll, we'll figure it out as we go, but definitely power ranking uh, like breakfast drinks. Yeah. I'm here for that. That's fair. Um, one thing I was told about this beer, they said that Smell the individual was saying, let it warm up a little bit. Like, sip it slow. Nurse it. Let it warm up because it'll like you'll hit different notes of this beer that you wouldn't actually get when it's right out of the fridge. Really? Yeah. So I mean, it is a stout, so that does make sense. Ooh, this is also nine percent. Sorry yeah, for jumping. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say <laughs> that was wow. my next point. Yeah. Tim beat me to it. This beer will clap your cheeks. It's just gonna get you through the hangover, bro. Cheeks, cheeks will be clapped. <laughs> what do you say we take a sip, boys? Uh, yeah, dude. Cheers to uh, New Holland Brewing, most likely, hopefully, killing See? another beer. Cheers, Cheers up, boys. Y'all. I mean, you already know they're going to kill it. A little bit of carbonation burst out out of the gate. Oh, yeah, that really is. Wow. Nice it, and rich. Bitter, bitter, syrupy flavor, I think. Really nice and rich, honestly. It's a uh, good rich. balance. <laughs> oh, big and rich is elite. It's, uh, it's a very good balance of sweetness and bitterness, like, it's, boom, like boom, you said. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. The the cinnamon and the maple flavoring is more prevalent in the smell, if you ask me. I agree with into you. The t- as to the taste, I don't but taste I'm it that much. I agree. not upset about that. The smell came off as almost a little overpowering, Dude. which is great for a smell. It made it seem like it was going to be really sweet. It's not yeah. really sweet. It really isn't. No. It's, it's a beautifully, I mean, first sip, beautifully balanced stout. I really like how it finishes because you still get a little bit of the pep of the carbonation, but like it just, it's... It's so rich and it's got such just like a like a creamy texture almost, but it just it really goes down real nice and smooth. Oh yeah. I'm trying to think, uh, getting a little, maybe a oh. little cocoa. Dude, I got a huge hit of that syrup. Honestly. Yeah, I'm really. And you know what it was? some syrup. Yeah, I didn't did take you? it down just like little by little. I just swallowed a gulp of it. Did you really? Yeah, I just went for it. He's like, Ooh. the professional who knows beer said to sip on it very lightly. Nick's like, bottoms up. No, Let's I, just get took, it. I just took I just took one little mouthful and that's just hilarious. swallowed the whole thing. No, no didn't let it ride down. That, that's a fair approach to it to kind of get the entire profile yeah. of the sip. Without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, this beer tastes really good right now. <laughs> I know. That's a very basic review at the moment. It, it really does taste like breakfast. I, uh, like, yeah. They really pull from that flavor it's, bank. It's interesting because it's kind of like a blend of it all. It's kind of silky. Yeah, I'm getting that. The texture is uh, like you said. The carbonation on the front half is a little more. Not not gonna say that I wanted, but a little more than I expected from a stout. Yeah, sometimes most of the time, especially something at nine percent. Oh yeah, probably gonna lay off the carbonation a little bit. Right, they usually just kind of float float through where you like it, it hits you. Like it's but it's good, like in a good way. Yeah, I'm not mad at it one bit. Pleasantly surprised. Like I said, like I thought this beer was going to come out out of the gate super sweet, not overly sweet, which I think is a good thing because sometimes stouts get a little bit out of hand 
and like, th- they, like they lose their drink ability when they're overly sweet but this yeah. one's just like mad decent like out of the gate so yeah, far yeah that's most things in life if they're too sweet you don't want them <laughs> yeah exactly if they're too spicy you don't want them but also at, <laughs> like at nine percent, maybe that's just me though <laughs> i can't handle the heat <laughs> this is true uh at nine percent a lot of times you can get that alcohol smell yeah i'm you not get that. getting that yeah i'm I get not the taste, getting that though. do you get the taste if you hold it in your mouth for a while i think it's more prevalent yeah i feel like that nine percent kind of jumps on the tongue a little bit keep it there for a second tim i agree with that i can, I can roll with that that's a fair assessment what do you well, i mean what honestly what, i don't that just might be our different taste buds. What's I drink a, a, a fair amount of neat bourbon. Yeah, yours are like eh, Friday night. Yeah. Mine are like, whoa. <laughs> They're Mine like, are like we've been night? waiting to get some real octane here. Oh my God. For you, octane. though, stouts, like how. Really starting to like them. Yeah, I was going to say, stouts for you, I feel like, are not something that you've been very accustomed to, but like, not until this. Are growing on you. Love it because of how creative people get with the flavors. Yeah. One hundred percent. Although I do have to say, I don't think stouts necessarily require the taste—not uh, accumulation, but um, like you adaptation. Don't have to, well, I think an, taste an accumulation IPA might be a good way to put it because you you acquire a taste for certain yeah, things. Ac- acquiring. That's, yeah. That was the word I was looking for. So but stouts are usually just like really easy going. If you like it, you like it. Yeah. If you don't, I think you just kind of don't. But, but some people I also don't... stouts tend to. If, do you agree with me that sometimes they tend to sit heavier and most people, some people might oh, not like that. Oh, 100%. Right. But if you're just drinking like a six ounce snifter or something, mm-hmm. like chances are if you like something that's got a deep flavor profile, pretty sweet, pretty heavy, you're going to enjoy that beer if you just like kind yeah. of a sweeter beer. I feel like it. there's not a lot of disagreeability with a basic style. Disagreeability. Yeah. <laughs> I think this one's actually. Is that a word? I don't know. It doesn't sound like it, but it might no. be. Well, agree- but it's cool. No, no, agreeability is a word, so why wouldn't disagreeability be a word? Because I disagree. Disagreeable? Because I have a high disagreeability. Dis- disagreeability. Yeah, <laughs> Just because you can't talk doesn't mean it ain't a word. <laughs> hey, but okay, one more, one other thing I want to add about the beer real quick is uh, being at, at 9%, it, it's not, it doesn't feel, it doesn't taste, it doesn't feel heavy like a, like a no. 9% beer should. Hmm. Like it's almost no, it, like really it, it it feels a lot lighter than a nine percent. Seems very judgmental of you to assume all nine percent beers. Listen, <laughs> I am beer. It's twenty twenty. I am bro. beer body positive. Okay, dude, I Are like you? all of them. That that worked. I'm not gonna lie. That worked a hundred percent. I'm yeah. here for that. Cheers. I think we're all beer body positive around here. It's got low disagreeability. <laughs> Can you check if that's a word? I feel I'm just, like it's you know, definitely dude, not I'm here, a word. I'm here for the positive vibes, bro. It's not a... It's I'm a, not here for your disagreeability. <laughs> is it a word? I feel like it's definitely not a word. 50-50. Uh, <laughs> that means it's, it's probably it's a, a word. word. Let's it, go! If it was not a word, he would have been like, it's not you a word. You can't be confident, though. I don't know. It might be. It might not. No. Nah. We're in his head, rent free. Yeah. All right. So, Tim. News has been popping lately for the all for 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 lack of a better term, just not great reasons. Yeah, like so, good reasons, but for bad reasons. Yeah. Um. This this pot uh, the, the next couple minutes of this podcast uh, are going to be a little different than the content we usually yeah. we usually talk about. We really try and keep things lighthearted, like on current events. Nope. Uh, but just, the, yeah. I I think there's certain things that supersede like importance of content some things just need to be talked about exactly and what we've seen with the the george floyd situation in minnesota terrible um i i don't think there's any other way to put it than that was one of the most brutal displays of intentional murder i've seen in my entire life it was absolutely heinous um watching that video was just you, it made you sick to your stomach yep. and if it doesn't make you sick to your stomach and if you have an initial reaction that's something different than that you need something to be worked out within yourself yeah 100 percent. like you cannot you should not be able to sit there and watch that and see the unrest and be like have any other notion aside from the fact that yeah things need to change stuff like this cannot proceed to happen like this is we're in 2020 people yeah this is not we need to be better i don't know if this if this doesn't piss you off like i said you need to uh you need to figure some things out because there's legally speaking, uh, that was murder. That wasn't police brutality. That wasn't an officer overstepping his bounds. And we, 
we like to believe we look just, at everything with a yeah. a very clear, rational lens. There are the majority of cops are good people that are trying to do a very tough job. Yeah. And do a good job at it. Hundred percent respect to those. But that's not what this situation is about. Flat out. This murder. situation is about an officer taking the life of someone that he is on duty to protect. He was not fighting back. He was handcuffed. There was four cops on him and a fifth standing guard in front of him. The man was entirely detained. There was no reason for that to prolong what it did. For 10 minutes straight, for 10 minutes straight, that officer, whose name I'm not even going to say because it's not worth my breath, sat there and killed this man, murdered this man in cold blood. After pleas for help, pleas for... Pleas... There was there was plenty of people yep. peacefully saying they weren't going and f- trying to fight these cops. They were saying they were pleading to right. let him go, because they we've seen this happen time and time again, and quite frankly, I'm sick of seeing it happen. Uh, it's just it's absolutely absur- absurd, uh, absolutely evil, and that policeman should be charged with murder, which we saw today. Thankfully, he's being charged for. Yep. If he gets yep. acquitted. I expect the situation that is oh. currently at hand to, to quickly devolve into a situation much worse. It will and escalate exponentially. On top of that, you have to look at those other four officers who sat there and did nothing. No, you're guilty by association. You 100%. did not do anything. If, that's, if that's something that citizens can be charged for and uh, be brought into the justice system for standing by, not doing anything, these officers should be held accountable as well. You are supposed to be able to understand the difference between right and wrong. You're supposed to be able to have the justifiable reasoning to say, okay, this situation has gone beyond a certain point. This needs to end. Do something. Yeah. Do not just sit there and stand by. Yep. You are in a position of power. And I think that's where ultimately a lot of this stuff is flawed. I think like there's just an ultimate flex of power in a lot of situations that law enforcement ex- like exercise. I think... You know, it's unfortunate the situation a lot of a lot of what we see in America today with race relations is uh, between Af- the African American community and the police community. And obviously, not being an African American man, I don't know what that feels like. But I know when you see something as heinous as that, you should be pissed off. Yep. You should wake up. You should. You know, should demand change exactly. And as, like I said, as not African American men or women, it's still on us, right, to say something when a situation like this arises. No, um, I, I entirely I, sympathize with the entire movement. Like it has gotten to a point that's just so far beyond where it should be. Yeah, like, dude, we are in the middle of a world pandemic, and yeah. the, that cop thinks that was his best use no, of his time. exactly. We need to be more united than ever. We can't be having stuff like this. Like, this stuff is so outdated. It's so old. It's so repetitive. They're, like, they're, they're, the, the call for change has been happening for so long. Why is it not? A century. Yeah, why has it not happened? What is hindering this? It's, it's an issue. It's we need to address it as a nation. Yeah. As a nation, we need to address this problem. Yep. Uh, with that being said, uh, I just want to personally extend thoughts and prayers to the family of George Lloyd. Yep. Uh, and God bless them. And I hope that you that this situation is used as a pivotal moment, and that his death is not entirely in vain. Because it is tough to see that it is going to be anything other than that at this point. One hundred percent. Couldn't say it any better myself, sir. I um. I think we're going to move on from this year, but yep. I think it was important that we said something. Exactly. And I don't know. I was I was pissed off, dude. I couldn't agree. I, yeah, I, 100%. Couldn't agree more. Through, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's infuriating. If if you're not pissed off, like I said, you, you got to check yourself. I think you guys are pretty sensible in the way you uh, approach thinking about that situation. Let's do our best to pivot into something a little bit lighter yep you guys see that conversation between uh dave portnoy and well it's not a conversation but the, like the drama dave and goodell portnoy and goodell dave yeah. and clown goodell b- 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 yeah. big daddy dave also b- 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 beta goodell <laughs> yeah, dude. It's, the man um, oh my god the guy just keeps ruining his name you know it's it's crazy because you would think that someone who is the 
NFL commissioner? Yeah. Who has ample access to what people say about him would have some semblance of self-awareness. Literally. Does re- For real. And so my take on this is Goodell was like, oh, you didn't pass a background check. Therefore, Dave, you're not coming. And it's totally a deflection because Bitch. he knows that Dave is going to try and pick him apart. At the same time, Goodell could have tried to make a good play knowing that Dave is going to come in there, try and do a pick him apart. Get your get your teams together. Get the people who handle your PR together. Figure out a plan on how you think Dave's going to attack you. Make it entertaining. People are going to tune into this. What if you're too worried, though? Yeah, okay, well, nervous, that just you shows can't handle you, it. you can't be too worried. You're the NFL commissioner, the largest league dude, in the world. Dude, it's make... Big Daddy Dave. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Nah, but it... nah. Here's the thing. It's going to be, it would have been televised. It literally would have been. National TV for a Monday night bro, football game. The Dave amount Portnoy, of viewership would have been insane. Dave Portnoy couldn't act in the manner that he generally acts right. online. This is 100% fact. And yeah. if you listen to what he said, he would be, he was like, yeah, I'd probably nail him on the deflate gate stuff. Yeah. But then after that, I'd probably do my best to make it pleasant. Yeah. Because mm. Dave's not going to go in there acting like a total cock because, like, he knows, he's like, this is an area, this is a chance to reach so many people. Yeah. Like, Barstool is already huge, but Barstool can always be bigger. Sure. Yeah, so Barstool ain't Monday Night Football. Baby. Dave, Dave yeah. does not drop the ball like that. So, Goodell, I mean, I think well, Goodell's just scared. Goodell was just scared. Okay, here, here's, a, here's a question for you. And we may have touched on this like 10 episodes ago or something like that. Uh, Big Cat and KFC were doing the rundown with Dave when he first won the auction. Yeah. And he they were just like, what if, what if you went down in his basement and he was just like, hey, man, all that stuff in the past. Squash the beef. Pretty funny. How would you That'd feel about doing a Barstool NFL collab for a New England game or something Huge. like that? That would disarm him. Like that, yeah. Dave. What what can you say yeah, at but that you, point? He could reach he out right now and say that, though. Why doesn't he? Well, yeah, he could, but at because the same he's time, he go shallow. Like, I, I also sucks. don't think. I also don't think it right now. Like, that's a very personal setting. Right now, the bar, like the NFL is not going to entertain Barstool in that fashion. But if you get well, Dave and Goodell in the same room, you get them in a personal setting. Dave is a people person, whether people want to admit it or not. Yeah. And Goodell. Whether people want to admit it or not, I feel like is is a more than ra- reasonable businessman. In some nope. see the opportunity. No, no. see the I opportunity. Actually, I actually a hundred percent disagree with you on that. You don't think Why? so? You don't 100%. think he's going to do something with the barstool following that no. could potentially be something amazing? No. You want to know why I say that? Is because for the past twelve to fifteen years since Roger Goodell has taken power in the NFL, he has made decision after decision that has decreased the NFL's likability, decreased their mass appeal. Well, like which ones? What decisions? Any of them. Well, let's give some examples. You can't just say that. Give me like one or two that you Okay, NFL commission. You can only wear one helmet throughout the year. You can't wear alternate jerseys. You You can't wear throwback jerseys. I don't. I'm not acting like I do. Because it's it's not not nicknamed the No Fun League NFL for a for no reason. Or was it like to make Isn't sure... a lot of this stuff voted on too through no. the owners? Well, no. Like, why did he why did he do that though? What was the reasoning? We don't know. That's well, there's got to be something. No, that's the weird thing. If the NFL commissioner literally has an absolute amount of power, why would owners say no to that? They would make so much money off selling more merchandise. Why would the okay, NFL say no one, to it? Because it's the weird thing about the way Roger Goodell goes about his business. Well, I don't know. I don't know if entirely. Sh- I don't know if that's an entirely solidified ground to say that he wouldn't be open to doing something like that. Dude, so, literally, he was the one that outlawed it. What? Ten years ago, you could do that. The Patriots would wear. Are you talking about throwback? alternate uniforms? Yeah, the, I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about the helmets. Yeah, I'm not talking about that at all either. Then what are you talking about? I'm literally talking about on the grounds of a barstool NFL collaboration. All right, hang on, hang on. What is the thinking behind the rule? The idea is to limit the number of helmets that players wear during a season because new helmets can be unsafe if they're worn fresh out of the box without a lengthy break-in period. They can paint the helmets they've been wearing. They do that That's every the same helmet, They though. do that exactly. They do that every week for Notre Dame. They do that every week for Michigan. College football teams do that year in and year out. You think if Okay, perfect example. 2 years ago or 3 years ago, Nate Ebner had a huge crack in the top of his helmet on a fullback dive. Yeah. For the Patriots. The next week, he had a perfectly glossed over Patriots helmet. You think those teams can't, don't have the capacity to... No, I didn't say anything. <laughs> I know it's exactly. a Oracle, no, but... That, that's I'm what I'm trying to say. The, the decisions Roger Goodell has made time over time. Why can't they wear alternate cleats during a game? Why can't they wear... 
Why do they have to have? On, they're only allowed to wear customized cleats before the game during warm-ups. But don't you think that all those individual items will make keeping things, what's the right word? Uh, Not uniform? fun. Unif- no. no uniform. You want to like, keep a uniform standard yeah. across the league. If okay. you constantly let people bring in new stuff, you're asking for people to try something. Perfect example. The NBA is killing. The NBA right now is the best shoe sale promotion in the world, right? Yeah. Okay. Because they're allowed to customize whatever they want. Yeah, they but can... shoes don't really matter. The cleat argument I get, but like, what if you somebody put like not... a steel plate in their helmet, so That's... spearing people, and they just what are you couldn't talking check? About? I'm just making shit up, bro. I'm just trying to like question. Like, there's got to be a reason why. That literally yeah, the reason. Well, is I mean, your your focus is on equipment and equipment standards. So, like, we're talking about something that's entirely outside the realm of the actual game. It's more of like a viewership I, standpoint and overall the opportunity to bring in more viewers for the NFL or sway opinion. Oh, uh, we're NFL. talking about different. Well, things. no, but he took the he took the stance of Those well, this is the reason why this is not viewership. Right. Okay. So, to an extent, but at the same time, I feel like it's not at all the same as collaborating with an entity like Barstool. Okay, they've clear. Dave Dave has said it several times. I Dave has actually collaborated with NFL franchises. Well, yeah, and he guess collaborated what? with the Patriots. He put out all the clowns. Yeah, and guess what? They got fined for that. Yeah. Why what, would what, you do that? Well, because they're, it's obviously the NFL wasn't backing it. So the NFL is the overall see all of the NFL that's teams. That's exactly what I'm saying. And what I'm well, saying is they that's don't not, do. Shouldn't any- be surprising. Then why are you arguing? Why no, are you- because it wasn't. Because what I'm saying is, it was an opportunity for Goodell and Portnoy to come together and potentially make something amazing or create know, a Tim viewership very opportunity. Early on, said he doesn't think the NFL cares about Barstool. No, sports. they don't. Yeah. Right, exactly. And I get that. But what I'm my no, but you don't because like you can't make that argument if you assume they don't care because part of the argument is that it's an opportunity for them right now. You can't hold. I'm those saying it's been things. an argument or it's been an opportunity for. I'm the past saying 10 in years. the atmosphere right now, but if Goodell would have allowed. Portnoy to come into that personal setting to actually start a conversation, then yeah. something could have come I, out of that. No, no, that no, no, was no. my entire argument. I also agree with that. The, the point that I was trying to get at is that the NFL makes bad decisions, so they're not going to do that, and that trail of bad decisions started when Goodell got in power because he's an egotistical, and, no sense of humor douche. And I said, what sparked that whole thing was I said that I think that Goodell has a potential to be a pretty, um, I don't reasonable or sensible businessman in He's some not. senses, or at least may be able, may have the capacity to. Okay, be. we're working off very different premises. I'm gonna be okay. honest, I cannot keep up with you guys, but it doesn't sound like you're saying the same thing. Whatsoever. Well, okay, well, no, what, what just he just got said, spun off into a tangent. Okay, no, no, what, what he just said was you think uh, Roger Goodell has the capacity to be a good businessman. Yeah. So what you're trying to say in in the setting in the context of the NFL? Yep. Sure. I do not agree with. That. Yeah, Tim yeah, is on the opposite premises. side of that. I think premises, he is yeah. a terrible commissioner year after year. There's a reason why Adam Silver in the NBA gets applauded when they do the draft. There's a reason why every single year Goodell comes on the stage for the first overall pick and yep. he's met with a bunch hey, of booze. And I'm going to put it out here right now. I'm not saying you're wrong. He's definitely made a lot of dumb decisions. A lot of people don't like him. I'm just saying in the aspect of a business sense and maybe having the capacity to make a possible good choice, I think it, it could happen. You know what, Kyle? You know what's an interesting question that you might be able to look up real quick? Uh, and th- this is honest. I don't know. I might, bro. I'm okay, kidding. obviously there's more. Um, could you see NFL's like revenue loss or increase over the past five years there's a bunch of different metrics and the issue is i think no matter what it's going to be increased because of tv deals being redone you're talking about like overall ticket sales it's like like definitely going up yeah yeah that's what i was about to say it's definitely going up but you have to imagine at some point but i think that's mostly carried by the tv deals because no matter what, that's going to go up. Like literally, the baseball. networks. I mean, Monday Night Football, Thursday Night yeah, Football. Yeah, these base, are huge contracts. Nobody goes to baseball games anymore. Yeah, they just and watch. The the TV deals are still skyrocketing. Like they just yeah. negotiated a ten dollar, ten billion dollar deal. And last the reason year. why that is, it's not even because like the game itself. It's because of the opportunity to advertise during those games. That's what's so major yeah, about it. Exactly. These companies are willing to just shell out millions yeah. and millions of dollars for thirty millions. seconds of airtime. Well, yeah, the NFL is going up by about. By about, I want to make sure I get this right, a billion dollars a year. Yeah, yeah that, I'm that not surprised, sense. man. Yeah, I mean, just because of the, the the amount of people that are trying to be on TV, the amount of people that are willing to advertise on TV, that market is forever going up. 
because it's I think the largest media space well, other yeah, than I the mean, internet this, other this, than the internet Super Bowl dude yeah, 30 second I, commercials are I think upwards of like is it the number one viewed sports World Cup. oh is it the World Cup number one viewed in America though well, obviously uh, okay so here's the here's the issue I think the World Cup still might be more viewed in America only because there's X amount of games and that's an aggregate Wait, I'm dead I'm absolutely dead the number one most watched sporting event was the Beijing Olympics. Number two was a cricket world championship. Really? Dude, well, cricket. that's in the world. That's in the world, no, right? Dude, it is, cricket, it is but even no, then, dude. Cricket I, yeah, cricket's huge, huge dude. Cricket's Which, actually insane. Cricket's was, actually fun to watch. I'm not going to lie. Dude, guy. I was just watching, like, three days ago, I was watching a video on YouTube about, like, the ten craziest, like, sports moments caught on camera or something like that. Yeah. And it was a cricket player. Hitting the ball directly into the sky cam, yep. messing it up, and then it fell on the field. And there was like a two hours. But the, dude, those cricket games go on for days. Dude, it's cr- there was there was this hilarious video. I hate to segment or like segue into cricket real quick, but I gotta tell this because I was it. dying. I'm so here for it. Over the summer, there was a huge cricket tournament. I think it was India or the UK. I can't remember Definitely which one. India. But there was a UK <laughs> team that was there, and the dude that was up to bat got beamed in the balls. The, for the for, from the first pitch, okay. First pitch of the game. Yeah, and he just goes, Jeez. oh, and then the second pitch comes in, and he gets nailed in the balls again, and he just oh. screams, no, <laughs> dude. Literally, look that video up. It is the audio. The audio for it is so funny. He just dude. screams, no. Have Have either of you played cricket? No, no, I've okay, never played in cricket. In middle school, in my gym class, we had to play cricket all three years of middle school. Yeah. Honestly, you can launch that ball for real aren't they yeah. rubber they're just rubber balls yeah they're like it's little rubber and it's got ball, it's like uh yeah. it's got like three ribs in the middle and it dude. comes around and dude you can launch it but sometimes those pitchers forth, get muffed up also dude actually they're called bowlers first off yeah, get your um, shit straight nick yeah dude i know don't come right. up in here talking but dude, bullshit. the weirdest thing is Whatever. i for those three years i tried to throw a America. good curveball 100 <laughs> No, I tried to throw a good bowl. So, like, you have to keep your arms straight. So the cricket pitchers, per se, yeah, the bowlers, they run. I and then they, they literally just, like, launch their arm behind. I already, I already don't like this. And they just throw it with a straight elbow. Yeah. And it's like it's, reverse it's softball. It's immediate time it, it, Exactly. That's it's like reverse softball. It, and it is impossible. I maybe threw ten good pitches out of yeah a thousand well there's a Jesus. reason there was a big there was a big fad with like mlb scouts going to india and like trying to recruit the the cricket people yeah man the the cricket uh, bowlers not not bowlers. pitchers i was corrected earlier but bowlers they're trying to recruit the cricket bowlers because uh i mean honestly those guys are insane but it doesn't translate well i guess to baseball because like tim was saying that throwing motion is so like straight armed the ball's smaller cricket yeah and it's like well it's like reverse softball pitch kind of deal and it would definitely throw hitters off though like yeah, imagine prob- having a straight arm yeah. yeah i want to say the Ooh. big issue with it is like not being able to maintain velocity and accuracy like trying to adjust to throwing a baseball yeah. because I, how, how heavy is a cricket ball not as heavy as a baseball right and it's not as big either right no yeah. sorry yeah. no you're good <laughs> Tim's over there falling asleep on us, ladies and gentlemen. I had to wake up at 4.30 for work today, boys. Oh, okay, dude. That's cool. But um, Took a lot of caffeine. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I just, you know, cricket players are a different breed, man. They, It's a crazy game. I'm not going to lie. Is, the, the fact that they can last, like, I think the longest cricket game lasted, like, three days plus. Or maybe it was, like, a week? Yeah, no. I, I, think, I think it was, like, a week. I, I don't know if it was a week. I want to say it was a couple of days. I remember hearing about that. It was insane. I know they go three days on like a regular basis. Who's really? That? Could you type in longest? Yeah, cricket type in game longest played? cricket game. We need to fact check this. A like week the, is insane. The two thousand three I'm days is insane. The two thousand seven cricket world championship won eleven days. Dude, I swear to God, if you know this, I'm gonna be so mad. Right, two things. Knowledge. One, baseballs are lighter than cricket balls. Really? Yeah, we, we yep. knew that. Oh wait, no, nope, we didn't know that. We didn't There's, know that. <laughs> we did not know. I that. do listen to what you say. I do make sure you say stuff that's true. Okay, bro, I was Secondly, wrong. That's cool. No, not you. No, it's cool. It, oh, Jesus. What is that? What is <laughs> that negativity right there? I'm just messing with you. What does it say? It was back in 1939. The cricket game went on for nine days. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay, you were right. My That's life. insane. Could you imagine going nine straight days while just doing nothing but, like, playing legit cricket? 
running back and forth in between wickets and hitting a ball. Crickets and wickets. Like, dude, how weird is that? You got to cricket the wicket. I don't even know what that means. What the, what's a wicket? It's like the... The little so stick you got to like, knock over? You don't knock it over. It's those little posts. Yeah, there's, there's actually yeah. three of them. I'm in the dark now, by the way. That's cool, bro. <laughs> There's like, like three it. of them in one thing. There's I don't remember if you have to touch no, one it. or the other. I, I don't know. I don't yeah, remember. I was like 12 years old playing cricket. I just remember I bombed one over the fence once, and my gym teacher shouts out, Mr. Smith, the man, the myth. He was just like, Timmy, why, why'd you do that? <laughs> and I was just like. It's like we only get one a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Timmy just blew it for the rest of the class. Congratulations. <laughs> Everybody Every, inside, we're doing a written test. Everyone was <laughs> just like, Tim like, sucks. <laughs> everyone was just like, thank God, cricket blows. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. Yeah. Our hero. All right. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I mean, I, I don't even remember where we were at. No. How, how, we, how did we get to talking about cricket? I don't know. But nonetheless, I want to segue into something <laughs> real quick, and that is, okay, Nick, so we just Nick got done. got us here. See, he's I know. doing it again. He's like, this way. This I, way. I do. <laughs> I want to take it somewhere because I was thinking about this earlier today, and we're coming up on summer, and it's got me stoked. I mean, it kind of flows because we're just talking about baseball and what's better than baseball in summer. The American Not of Not many things. Not many things trump baseball summer, apple pie, not Chevrolet, go forward. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> dude, boat days for summertime are the most electric thing, in my opinion, to spend your afternoons doing. Now, I there is lies. a Tim. You might be able to agree with me on this. There is a good way to go about doing a boat day, and there is a bad way. Now, fortunately for us, we have figured out both. We are professionals <laughs> at the boat day experience. Now, I just want to put out a fair warning to everyone listening to this podcast right now. If you're yeah. 21 years old. Don't buy a boat. Break out another thousand. That's what it stands for, baby. It. Uh, it was simultaneously a top three decision I've ever made in my life. Tim's like, this I feel is the like best decision true. I've ever like made, but don't true. ever no, do it. Don't do it, but I still like it because I have to deal with it. No, no. I could, dude, I could sell it right now. There's, there, so why don't you? Because I love it. Three? I was about to say it was a top three best decision and top three worst decision. That's not how things work in rankings. Yeah. That's, okay. I'm entirely torn on this. So do I buy a boat or do I not buy a boat? You have a best friend who has a boat, so well no, later don't in buy life, bro. I'm not saying right now. Oh, 100 percent later in life, definitely. It, the thing about a boating is, <laughs> like, we did a good job. I'm that, dock my boat next to your boat, so we can go hang out on our boats together on our lake. On are. our lake, we're gonna. Oh, it's gonna be. Nice. Own a lake. We're just gonna buy the lake. We're gonna need to put shout out that bar. slightly buzzed money. <laughs> Oh my god, what are we going to get one of those little backyard pools that the baby's playing? <laughs> yeah, I would be like, yo, my Tonka boat's better than your Tonka boat. Mine squirts water. <laughs> this is like, hell no. But and it's got... Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the fact that we use my boat as much as we do, I have no qualms with the idea that I bought it. Uh, was it a financially smart decision? Yes. No. Well, Clearly. No. It, it definitely wasn't. But right now, like I said, I could sell it for actually more than I bought it for. Put put a lot of man hours into it to get it to where it was or to where it is now. It's uh, technically vintage AF. Yeah. This be this be, this baby. I almost said beater, but that's not true at all. I love that boat. So, so for, my, my for apologies for my almost mix it's up. It's a uh, it's a 1978 24 foot Sea Ray SV 240 overnighter. That With means a, it has a little bed down below. Yep. It's got a Merc Cruiser 228 in the back, and it tops yep. out at like 45 mile per hour on the lake. The only thing that's sleeping down underneath deck, though, is those wolf spiders. They'll get you. Yeah, the spiders on Lake Erie are crazy. But, <laughs> yeah, I think the fact that we use it a lot makes it a good purchase. Yes. If, like, I haven't even put it in the water yet this year. Dude, I'm not going to lie, man. Like, some of my best days, like, some of my favorite memories over the past few years are just being out on the boat, whether it's working or not. It has broke down several times. We got the kinks worked out. That first summer, right after I bought it. Oh, my God, dude. Dude, we were like we would have four to walk, miles out. We would have to walk <laughs> it out of the marina because it wasn't like like the, the surf The surf okay. pushed in a bunch of sediment. Yeah, wait, actually, here's what happened. So I bought it from – dude, I, this, is, this is my boat. I bought, I bought a boat <laughs> at a marina that was owned by one guy. It had like 15 slips. If you know anything about marinas that usually hold 200 to 500 slips they're really expensive 
They're why, very why do you nice. have to walk it out, though? Because the guy who bought it the same year that I bought my boat, the guy who bought the marina, had no idea how to maintain a marina and to keep up a seawall on the edges of Lake Erie. Yeah. So he didn't put any maintenance into the seawall, and it broke oh. because he didn't reinforce it whatsoever. So. Yeah. And it was coming in from a eastern wind, so it, every single day it was just, it <laughs> just kept sediment. piling up, and then eventually it broke the seawall. Yep. So the entire thing broke. Yep. So just fucking long story short, you have to get out of the boat. <laughs> And it'd be about four feet deep. Luckily, his boat only draws no, about dude, a got, foot it, and a half, two feet. My boat on the trailer mode is nine and a half inches. And there were times where you would push it through less than a foot of water. It was crazy. Yeah. So. so you guys got a lot of room to spare, it sounds like. Like a good three inches working with you. Uh, every time I was there, it was, well, I mean, I'm not the tallest guy in the world. But every time hits. I was there, it was always about waist deep. So. I mean, yeah, yeah, about the, three feet. The majority of the time. Oh, okay. There's one time I went out with my cousins where it was literally about a foot of water, if not like 10 inches. And there was two times towards the end of the year where he just... Wait, I'm confused because you just said yeah, but then said two very different things. Long story short, the marina sucked. All right. There were some issues. You had to walk the boat out. You couldn't drive it out because next thing you know, you're dragging the prop and that's not good. Yeah. Hmm. And but that, the, the funniest oh, part about that, because you couldn't drive it out, you'd have to walk it out. If you had a choppy day that was blowing in some nice, like, waves, Terrible. maybe about a foot, foot and a half, two feet, dude, you were just sitting there, just getting, the boat was just going, bang, bang, and you're sitting there trying to hold it, not letting it knock against the seawall, and oh then you'd have to God. get in, he'd be and in there, he'd be like, of rocks. it'd just be me out there, and he'd be like, hold her steady, I'm gonna cook her up, or whatever, and he'd get in there and just go, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> just like get it out a little bit and i'd have to swim out climb myself up and be like you good all right well, the, the thing about this is the channel that <laughs> this stupid channel the way they designed it is right after you get out of it like past the marina mm -hmm. there's like a probably what would you say about a football field dude it's just rock like of, boulders they they, yeah. they brought in boulders and huge slabs of yeah. cement it's so not if awesome. you went five feet to the left or five feet to the right yep you're, what, you you're dragged, breaking your boat. What, like, we weren't deep enough one time, and you dragged the prop, and she stalled out, and the wake pushed us into this, like, seawall of, like, boulders yeah. and slabs. I was on the bow of the boat, and I had my feet over the railing, and I was I'm just push pushing rocks. it yeah. so it didn't slam into the rocks. And he's sitting there, he's just, like, getting it going. Finally, just cooks it up and That's just throws worst. it in reverse. He's like, we're out of here. <laughs> just, Whoa. Yeah, the nerves you feel in that moment. Yep. Ten oh, minutes. Ten yeah. minutes later, the impeller was just like, "I'm having a bad time." Yep. <laughs> Great replace decision. The, replace the impeller. It works very well now. The, 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 literally, what happened was the last time. That first season was the obvious. first season was rough because the impeller was leaking, so it would allow water into the gas. The Why don't fuel you tell line. Yeah. What the impeller does for the boat. So, like, I guess I don't know the best way to explain it. So pretty much when it's pushing water through the motor to extra it cools out, it because yep. yeah, it was sucking it up and then it's like this it's like this weird little prop that's bent heavily to one side yeah. to continue the motion of the air and the water through the Going motor. Through the motor okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So and we were like. <clears throat> the farthest we went out that year because we had like five straight runs of it running great i thought we had everything figured yeah, out send it we're going deep today we boys were like <laughs> we we're probably like two and a half three maybe four miles offshore yeah terrible. we just kind of just cooked it straight out we, past we the navigational buoys that's terrible and, they're like and all of a sudden it just starts going and i was just like <laughs> you can feel the vibrations we were standing there and he looked at me and he goes I don't think that's good. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I don't know, dude. Not gonna lie, we had, we had a couple ladies on the boat, and I was just like, we play cool, play it cool. I was like, all right, we're throwing we're throwing anchor here, and let's let's crack a couple brews and have a good evening. And <laughs> so hopefully she like, starts. <laughs> like literally, like we we hung out for like forty five minutes, and I was like, Tim did right. not enjoy himself like for oh, at least thirty no. of it. <laughs> no, it was terrible. Um, he had the back open. He, like, literally had the whole back seat propped up. He's, like, looking at stuff. He's, like, yeah, no, we're good. I'm just making sure everything's looking dry and everything. And then, like, five minutes later, he's, like, I, like we pulled, got a problem. I pulled Nick to the side. I was, like, dude, this is bad. So was, you this know is what? very, very bad. She was kind of bogging there for a minute. Yeah, and then, so pretty much 
if I kept it over like 1,000 RPM, it would start to stall out. So it probably took us like a good 40 minutes to get back in. And they were all just like, like why well, are let's you just going take it, so let's slow? Take it Tim was like, I'm just trying to see the sunset. Yeah. And they're like, it's 345. And he's like, uh, any minute. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. He's like, enjoy your white claw. <laughs> but last summer, dude, we, That's we had this down to a second. It was I a got, leap. I got a better marina. Yep. Dude, that marina is actually sick. Like, It's cool because you can fish in the marina. There's a big area right off, like, before you enter the big lake that you can just kind of, like, anchor off it and just chill so you don't have to deal with chop. Yeah, totally yeah. It's That's actually true. awesome. That's true. You totally go. Is this yeah. the one that you're at now that I've been to? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yo, yeah. I, you, I, I, I said that like sure you I, I said that like you'd never been there. I just, no, no, no. You're cool. I just want to make sure. I just up for another year there. Mm. Kind of right. Pretty stoked about it. It's super cheap for lake erie which is really nice yeah but it's really cheap we you can gas get, up there and everything it's yeah, we started to get like a really good routine down where we would set the boat up for the next trip clean it out yep drive down there get in warm it up have a, you know potentially a beer or two beer two maybe smoke a cigar yeah dude a cigar Just enjoy a boat night. cigar beautiful i'm gonna put you it this go way out, yep you cruise you listen to like good easy listening music Maybe some country, maybe some classic rock, you know, like 100%. some Eagles types. I want so on that note, on that note, I want to say this: to do a boat day right, you got to show up to the boat and you got to be prepared. You got to have some snacks. You got to have a couple of drinks on yeah, board. Cooler. Yeah, uh, you got to have tunes. If you don't have a radio on your boat, bring a portable speaker. Maybe yep. one that's waterproof because that's going to help. Also. You're not going to want to be on the boat the entire time. You probably want to get off and do some swimming or maybe just float around. So bring some inflatables. Yeah. Bring the floaties. Sure. I'm going to say it right now. Those floaties on that boat Elite. were the most clutch thing ever. Dude, literally, we'd probably drive about a mile offshore, which a mile on water feels a lot longer than a mile on it does. land. Yeah. And throw anchor. You're probably sitting at about 35, 40 feet in Lake Erie. Nope. Drop the anchor. Tie a rope to the back of the boat, yep. turn it off, but to the auxiliary battery so you can blare the tunes. Exactly. Tie a rope to the end of the boat and blow up like three or four floaties. And then you all the just homies. hang out on the lake and, and you, you don't float away. The the lake. Yeah, the only issue is, I'll tell you this right Somebody now from falls. personal experience, <laughs> the only issue is if you fall asleep on said We're floaty and your friends ass. suck We're and they all swim up to the boat and they, they get in the boat and all of a sudden you hear it fire up and they drive away and you're sitting out there, sitting in a floaty, half asleep, kind of in the bag. And you're just like, you where are, are all dude, my friends you were, going? You were, you were absolutely kind bombed. of in the bag, bro. I was fully in the bag. The bag was tied. <laughs> the bag was on its way to the dump, okay? I was a piece of garbage. It was fine. I was tied up in that tube, just sitting there. And then I was just watching you guys just drive off into the distance. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like looking at you, turn around, look at the shore. And I'm like, they're both really far. I'm having a bad time. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm looking at myself and I'm like, I am also incredibly sunburned. This needs to stop. <laughs> this kid literally. That's tough. Oh, it was it was great. I just remember I, sitting there and I was like, Jack, don't let go. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember like looking at him, be like, yeah, it'd be pretty funny to mess with him and just drive away for a little bit. Oh, me and him made eye contact. He's like, yeah, <laughs> just stuck off. And I was like, no, dude. We came back pretty quickly. I tried paddling my way like with my legs. That was I don't know why I thought that because at the end of the day I just started to cramp up and I was oh really tired. God. And yeah, it was no good. You know what's crazy? I got a an attachment for the boat this year with a grill like that attaches to the side of the boat so we can I, grill on the boat that's what did i say people bring stuff to eat bring snacks that right there that is an a1 grade a 110 percent power freaking move i was thinking about it i don't think i'll probably grill when we're out on the lake just in case you ca catch a little wake you know, just got nice the burgers three, up in the air. No, but like you can do that in the marina. Yeah, 100%. there's no wake in the marina. Let's say okay, so ideal boat day, you get out to the boat around eleven thirty, eleven o'clock on a Saturday morning. We're grilling on the lake. What happens is you go out We're for like two. Tim's three gonna get hours. a glass, a glass day on the lake, and he's gonna be like, "Let's bust out." Okay, well, yeah, <laughs> if it's a glass, that When's, happened one time this last yeah, summer. Yeah, dude, it's honestly, all we need to eat beef in the middle of a lake. Kyle's like, put that meat in my that. mouth. Or, or. Put it in these buds. We go fishing. <laughs> oh, 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 Nelly. <laughs> Hear me out on this. We go fishing. We got Moby Dick over here. In the lake. Buddy's trying to have a, a fish fillet. <laughs> we pull up a nice walleye from Smells Lake Erie. Like realize it's incredibly full of toxins. It's got three eyes. Throw it back in the lake. <laughs> and then grill up some brats. 
Listen, dude, I'm down to eat that fish yes. if you're down to eat that fish. Definitely not down to eat that fish. Hey, a little, little helping of mercury every once in a while ain't it's too bad. It's not mercury. It's straight toxic dude, you waste. you got to keep the immune system on its toes. Yeah, you if do. If it gets comfortable, you get sick. I Literally, just think, ingest a little dude, bit of blue algae, you'll be fine. Literally, there is a nuclear power plant that has been proven to leak into Lake Erie. Yeah. It's only Within an issue if you think it's an issue. that I'm at. I don't hear the fish complaining. You're telling me I've the been DNR swimming in toxic waste? I'm surprised dead. that you, I have not grown a third Nick, nipple. You do know that, like, the last three times we went out after we the didn't go in the last water. year. We're like a dog died out here. Several dogs died, and the DNR was like, yeah, don't go swimming. Actually, you know Did what's funny about that? Swimming? I didn't it's go growing. swimming. I didn't go swimming <laughs> the, the last three times grows. we went out, and Tim would be there, and he'd be like, it's getting too hot, and he'd jump in. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I'm Tim not jumped in a few times. Tim's like, yeah, what's 100%. worse, being too hot or having three nipples? Tim's like, I take a third nipple. Hot. I got enough body hair to conceal it. Yeah, I, <laughs> it was. It he was comes weird up, because there were times. Hair. There were times at the end of the summer where, like, we were the only boats within. Yeah. Well, it was sunny. weird, man. We were seeing those algae blooms. Like, we would come up on them, and they'd be like large. The, enti- the entire lake was green. Well, I didn't see that, but I saw. I didn't see the entire lake green, but I saw a few times where we'd be rolling through, and we'd just kind of be cruising up to an area like in a cove, and it would just be like where the water would kind of set, and it'd just be huge blooms of that algae. Yeah. It was crazy oh. looking. I remember you know, being like, it doesn't even, no, that looks gross. When, when yeah, we boated, crazy. you were with us too, when we boated down to Toledo Beach. Oh, no, 100%. Really cool. And I'm going to cut in just to say, having a destination makes the boat day that much better. Dude, that bar is sick. Yeah, so we, show we up went there, down to Toledo. It was amazing. Bucket cocktails, Corona's on deck. Woo-wee. I was and seeing. I was I'm not gonna lie. Back. I was seeing a lot of khaki. A uh, little, a lot of khaki. Khaki shorts, shorts was the uniform. They yeah. knew how to sell khaki product. Khaki shorts. They knew there how to get customers back. There was music at this bar. Yeah, there was an outdoor like bar, like legitimate outdoor bar. Yeah, it boats. Was, these boats would pull up. There'd be these beautiful boats. Like, we got like, cigarette boats. We got yachts. We're talking we got like everything. Ten plus million dollar boats. Yep. In this marina, Easily. and I just pull up in mine. I'm just like. 72 C Ray, what do you know it's about? It's a 78 chill on She's got a new one. What's she got in there? A V8? Yeah, it's a V8 Merc. Is it a 280? Two, 228. 228. Um, but not Wait, the craziest thing 240. is actually. You definitely said 240 earlier. I definitely said 228 earlier. It's a You, tw- said, it's a, no, it's you said 240 no, V. I it's want the people SV to go 240 back. 240 is the model name. Yeah, so we Kyle. Said 240 earlier. Listen, I don't know shit about the boat. The boat is a Merc Cruiser. You can run that back. It's a Merc Cruiser 228 in the back, and it is the boat 220 is, is a, a prop size? Ray. No, it's the engine size. Oh, 220. Yeah, I'm retired. And the, <laughs> the boat's is model is an SV240. Okay, so can you see where my confusion came from? Yes, yes. There we go. But long story short, is these these guys, like the old dudes who were driving you know, these crazy yachts or was having someone else drive them for them, yeah. they were... Like, in the minimal conversation I had with some of them, they were like, hey, man, that's a really clean, classic boat. Good for you, man. And I'm just like... And then, then you left. You're like, thanks. And they're like, <laughs> she fucking... He was excited. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was nah, me. dude, it's that a was thing. Me. Like, like one wave and dude, that thing's okay. skepsis. You, you just have to think... No, this this boat's, boat's way too boring. Like, I bet you the Impeller died like a year ago. You have to think... <laughs> I'm just like, well, that's true. Uh, you have to think time. about it like a classic car. You know what I'm saying? Like boats yeah. usually don't last that long. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. You don't really You're see too right. many of them out on the water, but not justifying saying my boat's super sick or anything. So it really isn't. But it's a boat. Oh, man, it's cool with my boat. <laughs> I think that boat's like the equivalent to a Corvair. <laughs> no, no, they don't flip a lot. Our Corvairs aren't that bad. You Corvairs think you, you think were you like could flip that boat. There was a documentary built. Was it Corvair designed to kill or? Uh, what was that documentary called? I think you're mistaking it for the Ford Pinto. No, no. I'm Can you type in Corvair documentary? I just tried to think of the <laughs> most miscellaneous car I could think of. Why would they make a documentary Because a car? It, was, it, was, it was like designed to kill people. It wasn't well, designed, but... I'm not going to lie. There you know, Nick Covey took the time to give it five stars. There was a <laughs> few things. There was a few documentaries made on the Pinto because that what thing was, was a... What was the documentary on? Will it kill you? That's what I'm finding. Will the Corvair kill you? Corvair. Yeah, no, there, there. It was like in the late seventies. There was a documentary called "What's That Corvair?" Desi- Designed to Kill or something like that. It I think probably, it may have been called "Designed to Kill." I feel like it was a multitude of cars conglomerated into one documentary. No, it was legitimately <laughs> just on the Corvair. That's hilarious. It's He's the upset. James Bond of cars. He, he, it's, it's uh, 
The what James, the, the James what is the phrase? We, what is the phrase? We, okay, no, I'm not joking. I watched this in a... I'm not denying it. I'm yeah. just saying. I watched the documentary. I just tried to pick the most miscellaneous License vehicle. License to kill. That's what I was going to say. Jesus. Yeah, no, I, I don't... <laughs> Tim's like, bro, no, 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 dude, our live audience members what, over here agree with me, so, uh, <laughs> this guy, well, I'm just saying, Wait, the boat's a beauty. What do you think it is? It's, like, designed to kill? What's, I mean, the, the, I mean the, Cor- the Corvair's kind of a beauty. Corvair's a terrible car. Well, 100%, but that's what makes it great. No. It was so bad, it was funny. It was good. It was is great. that how you feel about the Mustang 2? Yeah, it's hilarious. No, Mustang 2s are gross. I didn't say they weren't. There's a lot of bad cars around that era. And you know it. Yeah. It's a know. tough scene for the car industry. It always has been, always will be. Especially. But yeah, wait. Let's let's get back on this. what makes a good boat day. We got we got Great. food. We got drinks, I assume. We you got to drinks. Have drinks. You got to stay hydrated, though. Don't forget the water. I swear to God. I say a destination is dope. That's yeah, a desti- I, I, like the, I like that. Important. I like that a lot. Because if you can roll up on a boat to a like lakeside bar or oh. like a little tavern, like one... That is some BDE. And if you don't know what BDE is, look it up. And two, rolling up there, like, you're just excited. Well, what if you go to, like, your friend's house and you roll up on the water? You're like, that's a good point, I'm too. I'm on top of the water. I'm not Jesus, but yeah. I'm close. Like, let's say you have access to a lake and you know some people that live on said lake or at least on that chain of lakes and you can just roll through the channels. The next thing you know, you oh, pull yeah, up and bro. you're like, hey, I got a cooler full of this, this, and this. You got a cooler full of that. What do you say we all get on this boat, go to the sandbar? And they're like, Sandbars yeah, are elite. Like a sandbar party, sandbars all time, amazing. amazing time. I think this summer we should go to Putin Bay. I would love to go to Putin. It's about Dude, an hour boat ride. I've never been to Putin Bay. We can do it. Is the Have impeller you been to Bay? really fixed? Yeah, the impeller's yeah, okay. good to go. Yeah, it. I actually, Dude, we'll just slap boat, one of those racing props on there. We'll cook there in no time. Yeah, we'll just not do that and blow it up. <laughs> but it it will take about an hour to an hour and a half. I'm done. We can we great. can make that happen, but. It'd be crazy, bro, because we'll be in that part. Like, there will be a probably, like, 20-minute portion where we're cutting across the middle of Lake Erie where there ain't a whole lot to be seen. Like, you're just you're like, just like Ooh. if just we die, we die. I just immediately crank the wreck of the Emma Fitzgerald on repeat. No. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> yes. The legend no. lives on of the Chippewa no, down. Of the big lake. They no. call it Shigumi. Even though it's like TV Erie. again. No. <laughs> Wouldn't the, it suck if we got like halfway out there and a storm just whipped up real quick? The lake quick? it is said that life, never bro. gives That's up or dead. Thing, the thing is, that would be something we would have to like November get ready for. for. Like really get ready for, really plan in advance. Because you're going a, a decent amount of space across one of the five largest yeah, You got to earn put in bay. You don't just get it. Yeah. Thanks, Kyle. No, <laughs> you guys are assholes. <laughs> 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 you set yourself up for that yeah. one, Super Chief. Cool. Nonetheless, there's okay. ways to do boating right, and there's ways to do boating wrong. So we, we listed got... off the ways to do it right. If you're not doing that, you're doing it wrong. Okay, Nick so just, just to double plugs. down, we got food, music, obviously drinks, uh, destination. destination. Okay, so here's, hey, something, Anna, here's what... something I think that's important real quick. That I'm so I, when, when I first got my boat, I thought I was going to hate it, but I love it. Is having a shade structure over the top. Yep. Mm. That is so important because a lot of boats don't have any canopies Pontoons, or anything like that. Specifically. Hot. Yeah. Pontoons which, are very known for that. Like, Hot. dude, honestly, if you don't have some protection from the sun and you're out there for a couple hours, you get that cooked. sucks. It's a bad time. One thing that I wanted to say is, you know, if, uh, if you're having a squad of people out there, keep the ratio in mind. Ratio is key. Ratio is important. You want to have a ratio. Also, gotta have grills and girls. <laughs> yeah, you want to have grills and girls. <laughs> like, grills and grills. It's also important to know who's out on the boat with you. Yeah, you don't like, want a total jack. Because let's be honest, you're spending probably five to six hours on a small vessel. Vessel that probably holds like max eight people comfortably. You could fit more on it, but like eight people is pretty much where it caps out on comfortability. Sure. Yep. Like it's gonna suck if like one or two of those people suck. Yeah, 100%. We've seen it happen. It's a bad time. You want to make sure, one, your ratio is solid. Two, the people that are in that ratio are also solid. You need boat day tier people. Yeah. yeah. Do you you want to get out there and just be like, oh, today is either going to be hit or miss. Like, I really don't like this person, but they like or this person. Or you're, like, enjoying your time, and then someone 
you're just like Ruins that guy time. sucks. No, <laughs> like, yeah. no, I love I, I love him. This is not a negative thing. But do you remember that day we were out there and Dale was like, "Boys, it's gonna rain." And Dale, you wouldn't stop saying it's dude, gonna rain. You literally got a little storm. You got in his I'm face like, and you were like, raining. "You were like, Dale, bring quit down. bringing the negative energy. True it's story. not gonna rain." True and it story. didn't rain at all. It, it didn't rain at all. Beautiful. During no. the summer, me and Dallas hang out probably four days a week. Three of those days we're on the boat. Yeah. During non boating days or non boating season. We hang out maybe once every month. Oh. This dude just likes me from my boat. I'm Dale, if you're you watching out, this, you've been called out. It's on you, bro. This is true. If you own a boat, watch out who's just taking advantage of you for your boat. <laughs> Make sure they bring food or drinks. Oh, my God. Or at least good in spirits. Which case, Dale's fair. currently in Mexico. Like <laughs> Dale's like, oh, my God. Oh, oh. I hope he's traveling soon. <laughs> I hope that's true. <laughs> just kidding, Dale. I love you. Nonetheless, there's ways to do it right and there's ways to do it wrong. Take yeah. our advice for what you will. If it's not your fancy, then that's not your fancy. If you like going out by yourself, go out by yourself. Just make sure that you know you take a flare gun or whatever. Yeah. You don't want to be caught in a bad situation you where you're just like, oh. Person, unless you're on a small boat, but yeah, bring some life vests. There's boat days that are done right. There's boat days that are done wrong. There are beers that are done right, and there are beers that are done wrong. This beer is not one that has been done wrong. This beer has done me so well. This beer has been. Phenomenal experience from top to bottom. From cold to room temperature. I'm not mad at this one bit. No. And that's one thing. I want to come back to that. I said that for a reason. One thing that uh, was, you know, let in on is as this beer gets a little bit warmer, close to room temperature, it really starts to elaborate on some of the key flavors that are involved with it. Yeah. And I think that is entirely true. There has not been a single sip where I've been like, nope, that wasn't it. Every single time, I'm like, yes. Tim, I know you want to say something. Yeah, go Tim ahead. Go. Let's see. What did he do? Just breach a... Dude, what? This beer has a brunch of good flavors. I want you to tell us more about them. Tell, tell us about the brunch of good flavors it has. Did I say brunch? No, I did. Oh, my God. Uh, this dude, guy. Dude, Let's I've go. been up for like... <laughs> I don't even know where I'm like, right where, now. Where am I? I was just I, I was about to say it was like the cocoa and the cinnamon is a lot more prevalent when it's at room temperature. Yeah, I was gonna say that's the same it. thing. That's like it. <laughs> maybe uh, I was gonna lean more on the cinnamon. I get a lot of the cinnamon, especially on the back half of the beer, but it oh, still dude. stays just as yeah. rich and just as silky as it did when it was cold, which I love about that. And now the one thing I will say, <gasps> obviously there should be no surprise to this whatsoever. The carbonation has depleted a little bit. In a as great it goes. way. Yes. In a great way. Yeah. Like I would, I wouldn't be mad. Like you said, he was. There's the, like a uh, subtle hint of that carbonation. The beer expert, um, who we talked to about this beer, said, "Wait till it's room temperature." I love how mischievous this guy is. You guys won't say it. <laughs> You want, you want to give him no, a quick don't shout do it. out? No, no, no. Don't do it. He's no, our no, guy. No. He's no, our guy. He's our guy. I wanted to be honest. He's our guy. He I'm knows who he is. Say it. He knows who he is. And I if you noticed. know, he knows the podcast. Know. Oh yeah, no, he knows the know podcast him, exactly. You know. He's here for the boys. Great insight. Hey, we appreciate you. Hundred percent. This man knows it. He gets it, and he's here for the boys. And he was right. He's Berta. This this beer has aged beautifully with temperature. Yes. I, I did think at the very beginning the carbonation was maybe the biggest downfall it had. As it's, I'm not going to say it's flattened out, but as it's subsided. It, it, as it's evened out, I guess is a yep. better word for it. Yep. It has become so enjoyable. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give this beer a electric rating. If you are a stout fan, 10 times out of 10, you need to get this thing. Uh, but yeah. I'm going to give this electric rating. Definitely going to be buying this at some other point in my yep. life. And I'm, I'm glad. This is why I love this show, man. I'm glad we had the opportunity to try this thing. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, probably wouldn't have without this. So. 100%. I couldn't agree more. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to step up here and I'm going to give it a must buy if you're looking for a good stout. A true oh. stout that really embodies not only flavor, but a characteristic that is diversified from being something that's not just a flavor based out like it it really embodies a a smooth palatable taste one that's drinkable throughout the entire time it True. has the abv of a heavy beer but it doesn't sit like a heavy beer True. this beer is totally sippable over a course of time it's not overly heavy it's not overly rich you don't get sick of the taste i would 100 percent recommend buying this beer at any given time 
whether you plan oh, to drink it at that point or not, yeah. keep it chilled, keep it in the fridge, crack it open on a special occasion, must buy beer. Wow, a, a strong must buy from Nicholas Hovey. Yeah. I'm here for it. Yep. Go oh, screw it. it. I'm going must buy too. I enjoyed oh. it a lot, man. I really did, dude. I like, agree. 100%. I, think I even said it in a roundabout way. I was like, if you like stouts, you need yeah, to buy You this just beer. don't come across stouts like this very often. Yeah, nope. this is, there is, dare I say, a flawless beer. Dare you say. Dare I say a flawless dare beer? Dare you say. That is, I will say, knowing Tim Richards as well as I do. That doesn't that, happen. That's a heavy, that's a heavy sentiment. That is a very heavy sentiment. That doesn't just, happen often, ladies and gentlemen. The man I, has I, an acute taste palate. <laughs> I, I guess I just if if Kyle maybe you can enlighten me with your final beer thoughts ones and twos um, let us know but what if you can prove to me that there is something that is a flaw in this beer then let me know I hope he knows that that post is going to be on the entire time we're talking yep young child you'll come to realize in time that young there is truly one flaw to this beer as I see it we're running out. There is no more. <laughs> <laughs> the beer is simply gone. Uh, I'm sorry for ruining that. Beer. And a gone beer, <laughs> a gone beer is an opportunity for another great beer. I completely agree. Okay, I'm done with my bullshit. This beer is dope. <laughs> that was so cool. It's like a stout. You get like the beer flavor, but then you get all those little hints of breakfast and brunch right in it. You 100%. get like, the maple, and you get the uh, I just like that coffee finish, like you were talking about, Tim. This thing was really good. It was. So I'm going. I'm gonna go electric. And then I'm going to go must buy. Yeah. Must buy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. Should try it. This, this is, is great. the first unanimous must buy. Five out of five must buy beer on this show. That's so, so if you have not gotten New Holland Brewing's Poets Brunch, Brunch Stout, go Do out, it. get yourself a six pack, have yourself a great evening. Yep. Because I promise you it won't disappoint. You know what? Yep. Have yourself a great day. And have this in a, in a nice brunch setting. Straight up. You're going to do yourself a disservice if you pass this one up. I promise you that. If you like stouts and if you enjoy a good beer, even if you're not really even into stouts, try this one out. I promise you it might enlighten you. It's a great beer. And you're going to have a good time. Certainly not going to have a bad one. 100%. How about a beer? Well, Timmy boy, what do you say? Is that a wrap on episode 16? I think that's a wrap on episode 16. So everyone out there, you guys have a great evening. Uh, stay slightly buzzed and... Uh, We'll see you soon. Yeah, y'all. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. We love your support. Thank you so much. Cheers.